Everybody, it's Tyler here at Chessie Champs, checking in team number 254, Cheesy Poofs, coming, of course, out of California, Hall of Fame team. Uh, we're excited to go through, of course, this fantastic machine, not only aesthetically pleasing, it functions fantastic as well. And then here today, tell us a little bit more about this robot. It's going to be Pranav and Amar Swan, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about this here on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. We'd also like to thank Kettering University. Kettering University is where robotic students come for their education. Over 30% of those who attend Kettering University were in high school robotics, and you can keep going with their BattleBots, VexU, eSports, and FIRST mentorship programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12, 2021. So we're going to be running a systems check and going through that. Can you talk to us a little bit more uh, what goes into the systems check and then kind of go through each uh, component mechanism as you have as well? Yeah, so for a systems check, it's just important that uh, before each match, we make sure that everything is working as expected. And so we always, always start off with the drive base. Um, this year, we have a West Coast drive with six inch pneumatic tires. Uh, do you want to run forward and backwards? And so we just check that it's running forward. Enabling? Yeah, and then so one of the cool features is we have uh, shifting. So we have a high speed for doing quick cycles, and we have a low speed if we need to push through defense. You're probably one of the uh, few higher end teams I've seen that have used pneumatic wheels. What made you choose that? Uh, we wanted to be able to drive over the bumps uh, in the middle of the field. Sure. And we just tested out a few different types of wheels, and we liked the way the pneumatic wheels handled when they went over the bumps. Makes sense. All right. Uh, so now let's do intake. So uh, uh, we just deploy the intake. Uh, we have a non-parallel four-bar intake. We use two-inch pneumatic, uh, sorry, two-inch flex wheels on the intake. Yeah, and then uh, next we move on to the serializer. Our serializer is capable of holding five balls. Um, we use a, a series of brushes to actually control the um, balls, so, yeah. And we've gotten a lot of questions about why we chose brushes, yeah. and we did a lot of um, testing with different types of uh, designs. We tested a linear serializer, we tested several different rotary ones, and we like the compliance the brushes gives us. We found that it naturally spaces out the balls, and it also, um, if it jams, then the brushes just spin past the balls, so we don't have too much problem with like burning out motors or anything. Makes sense, yeah. All right, now let's move on to the shooter. Um, so our shooter is a double flywheel shooter uh, with a hood. And we chose double flywheels because it gave us a nice flat shot to make it easy to uh, be accurate. Um, so, Nirmal, do you want to? Rotating turret. So it's on a turret. And so that just gives us a bit more um, flexibility with how the drivers position the um, robot and still be able to shoot. Talk to me a little bit more about using the tension spring here uh, and having that uh, hold your cord. Yeah, so we use, um, we call this Bigus. It's uh, energy chain and uh, to run to the turret. And then if we didn't have that, then we found that the, but I guess we weren't able to control it making a nice loop. Sure. And so we just wanted something pulling it uh, to be able to have it, to be able to keep its shape. And so we tested surgical tubing, we tested uh, constant four springs, and we went with this. As we go to your shooter, talk to me a little bit more about uh, what motors you're using. Uh, you can talk to me about some like maybe the compression that you've been tr testing out to try to get that right ratio as well. Yeah, so we use um, we have three Falcon 500s on the shooter. One of them drives the hood, and the other two drive the flywheels with the one-to-one -one reduction. Um, when we were doing prototyping and testing for the shooter, we tested a single flywheel design. We tested a double flywheel design. We changed the compression a bit. We tested different ones. And we just found that this was what gave us the most accurate shot. Sure. And are you doing any uh, specific types of systems tests for the shooter or calibrating or anything like that? Yeah, so do you want to go into that right now? So we just have a limelight, and you can see how it tracks the target. 
And so you just make sure that that works properly. All right, we're good. When you're utilizing the limelight, are you, uh, other than tracking, is that providing any other sort of feedback in regards to like, you know, your shooter speed or anything like that? Yeah, so from the limelight, we're able to estimate our distance from the target. And then we basically, we, based on the limelight distance, we have a hood map and an RPM map. So we, we basically went on the field. We were able to test a bunch of angles from sure. distances and different RPMs. So in the match, we're able to change our, our shooter RPM and our angle uh, based on the distance from our target. So what are systems are we going to be uh, checking here on this robot then? Well, the last system to check out is the climber. Um, this is not our original climber from 2020. We actually redesigned it um, during this past off season um, to make it better. And so the way the climber works is, um, do you just want to do it not normally? So uh, we have two stages plus the hooks that flip out. And so when we deploy the climber, the hooks flip up. <laughs> and the climber goes up. And then the driver is actuated by these constant force springs you see here. It's really light, so we were able to use really small constant force springs. And then the driver is able to jog the climber up and down um, for to actually climb. And then uh, to stop the robot after we've climbed, we have a brake inside the drive gearbox. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but we just have a brake that uh, holds the climber in place. Lastly, as we wrap up on this robot here, uh, as 254 approaches seasons, obviously most successful team in first, especially in the last decade for things, what advice do you have for teams that are looking to improve uh, their processes and how they go about their build seasons and trying to strive for more success as well? Yes, yeah, so one thing we uh, value very highly is modularity, being able to iterate on our designs. And so um, you'll see that these superstructures, they're not actually the climber is a superstructure. We can pull it all off. Um, we have screws over here, and so we can pull the entire thing off if we ever want to change our design. Um, we just make sure that if we ever have a better idea or if we want to fix something that isn't working, we're able to do that and we're not just boxed into a single design. And so modularity is really important. Lastly, I just want to ask you, are there any are like maybe sensors that are being used in this robot that we, uh, it's not as easy to see maybe on camera uh, that you can maybe talk to us a little bit more about? Yeah, so um, the biggest other sensor we use on this robot is we have a banner sensor here with the reflective tape over there. And what that does is we can detect um, when we're serializing, are there any balls that aren't properly seated in the serializer? And so we know if we need to keep spinning, if we need to do anything to uh, break jams and that kind of thing. Well, 254 Cheesy Poos, obviously every single year making fantastic machines. Really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us more about your robot and what's going on. Of course, uh, good luck here at Chessie Champs. Thank but you. Can't wait to see your robot in uh, future seasons, future competitions. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Don't just sit in class. Kettering University is the only school in the U.S. that allows you to work as an engineer your first year with their three-month on, three-month off co-op programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12, 2021. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.